Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to learn about sample size calculation and also how to calculate the power of a study or power analysis of your study. So with you, I am Shanglap Kundu and currently I am doing my masters in physiotherapy in neurology from NILD Kolkata. So first we need to know what is the need for a sample size calculation. So it is to decrease the probability of failing to reject a false null hypothesis or to reduce the probability of type 2 error. So statistical power is equal to 1 minus beta which is the probability of attaining a statistical significance. Now generally in our study we are so focused about type 1 error that we sometimes neglect the type 2 error. But to reduce the type 2 error we need to perform a sample size calculation. Now generally we take beta as 0.2 so that it gives the statistical power at 0.8 or 80 percent and then we calculate the sample size according to that. Now remember lesser the value of beta the power of the study will increase more. So if we take beta as 0.1 then the statistical power will be 0.9 or 90 percent which is better. So beta is equal to 0.2 means that there is 80 percent probability of demonstrating a statistical difference and reject null hypothesis if there is any actual differences exist which is the type 2 error. Now what are the ways to calculate sample size? So if you see different books there are many ways so I am trying to keep things simple here so remember there are two ways first is estimation of sample size from population here we use mathematical equation to get the sample size now the second way is based on statistical test so we need to know the statistical test that we are going to perform and then we use different softwares to calculate the sample size now the first point is the estimation from population where we are going to use mathematical formula. So this is the formula but please don't panic it is a very simpler one. So here S is equal to the sample size that we are going to find out. So first is the X. So X is equivalent to the T value. Generally we take it as 0.05 or 5% confidence interval. So X will be 1.96. Now the P stands for population portion and the minimum value of P is 30 percent but generally we take it as 50 percent or 0.5. Now D stands for degree of accuracy which is equivalent to the P value and generally we keep P as 0.05 so the D value will also be 0.05. Now N stands for estimated population. Now this population value you can get from different articles search for the demographic values you will get the article and from that you will find your estimated population now using this formula the sample size could be somewhat like this now the second part is based on statistical test so to perform this we need to know the statistical test that we are going to perform beforehand generally we do a pre priori power calculation but we can also calculate the power of study after it has been completed but it does not keep that much of value. So we can use different software for this. So if you see there are many many softwares but but these three are my favorite software. So first is the open AP. You can go to this website and perform the power analysis. The second is the G power analysis software which you can download from this website and the last one is the Vanderbilt University Medical Center which is dedicated for different clinical trials. You can also perform the power analysis using their software. Now in the next video I am going to show you how to perform the sample size calculation using the G power software which in my opinion is the easiest thing to do if you are doing clinical trial for the first time. Hello everyone in this video I am going to show you how to calculate the sample size of your study or to perform a pre-priori power analysis using the G-Power software. 
So in the previous video, I have already told you how to download the GPower software. So now after opening the software, we need to know some basic things before performing the power analysis. So first thing we need to know the test that we are going to perform. Generally, we perform the t-test and in t-test, we generally go for this means difference between two independent means. So we generally compare between two groups, right? Now in the type of power analysis, as I already mentioned, we are performing the pre-priori analysis. So we will keep it as a priori, right? Now in the input parameters, the first option is the tail. So in tail, you can see there is either one tail study or two tail study. So generally we perform two tail study as we have two type of hypothesis and we do not know what group will be better before performing the statistical analysis. So generally we do not do any superiority trial. So we keep the tail as two tail study. Now please ask your guide about this if you are not sure. And the second point is the effect size. So this is the most important thing. The effect size or Cohen's D value, we need to find it from an article. Now here in this article, that neuromuscular electrical stimulation effect on lower extremity motor recovery and gait in stroke patient. So here in this article, go to the sample size section and here in sample size, you will get this. The minimal effect size for NMES in motor recovery has been reported as 0.54 for stroke patient. So now if you are doing a study using NMES and your target population are stroke patients, so then you can take this 0.54 as your Cohen's effect size P. So here I am writing 0.54. Now alpha error problem, we generally keep it as 0.05. For power, that is 1 minus beta, we keep it as 0.80, that is 80% power. And the allocation ratio into slash N1, that is the number of patients that we are going to keep in each of the group. So generally we divide our patients equally in each group. So we keep it as one. Now after doing all this, we need to click on the calculate value. So after calculation, we can see that the total sample size is 110. So we need to take 110 patients if we need to fulfill our this part, that is our input parameters. Or in short, if we keep our study at 80% power and the effect size is 0.54, then we need to take sample size 110, where each of the group will have 55 patients each. Now, to keep a proof of this, you can do two things. First, you need to download this graph. So after that, just click on the file button and click print distribution plot. Here, just go here and write S1, whatever name you want to suggest. Then also on the protocol of power analysis, right? Here also click print protocol and save the file. Now, after doing that, you can see from the text talk, you can get this graph and also the sample size calculation. So you can show this sample size calculation when you are submitting your dissertation. Okay, so this is it. And if you think that I have simplified the power calculation for you, Please don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the video. Thank you.